What's cracking, everybody? It's your favorite starving musician, Jackie Jordan, and you are tuned in to another episode of A Short Podcast with Jackie Jordan. Yes, I am your host, Jackie Jordan. Now, before we get into the topics that we got to discuss today, go ahead and do me a favor. Hit the like on this video. Click the subscribe button. Hit the little bell next to it so you get a notification every time I drop a video. And after you get done listening to this intriguing piece of content, I want you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. All right, let's get into it. Now, God damn it, I've got a lot to get off of my chest today. It's been a lot of fucking shit going on in the hip-hop world. Um, if you've been following this channel since day one, you know that I am a hip-hop head. When I first got into this shit, I was a rapidly rap hip-hop nigga, right? When I first started off in this rap shit, I got started off in battle rap. That was my arena. I love going head to head, toe to toe with some of the best lyricists and MCs on this planet. And in hip hop, the Civil War is going on. The Civil War between hip hop artists Kendrick Lamar, Drake, and J. Cole is trending on social media. Last week on this podcast, I got on here and I chose a side. I said that I was rooting for Drake, but I made sure to leave in a tidbit that I believe that J. Cole was the best rapper of the big three. Uh, and when I said that, I meant that shit. I don't just get on here and just say shit that I don't mean. When I said J. Cole was the best of the big three, I meant that. But I said that last week. This week, I kind of feel a bit differently. All right. Those of you who've been living under a rock, Dreamville Fest, J. Cole got up on stage and he apologized to Kendrick Lamar after releasing a diss record towards him called The Seven Minute Drill on his surprise mixtape, Might Delete Later. J. Cole said for 72 hours he was having trouble sleeping and that he felt unsettled in his spirit by going out of the great Kung Fu Kimmy. J. Cole could no longer sleep. He didn't feel good in his spirit. And he decided to wave the white flag and bow out of this rap beef. God fucking damn it, bro. What happened to hip hop? J. Cole is one of my favorite artists in the game today. He's one of the greatest lyricists to ever pick up a microphone. One of the most talented people on the planet Earth. Nothing but love and respect for J. Cole. Now you see the title of this video. The title of this video is Might Regret Later. And that's because I might regret putting out this podcast later. Because like I said, I am a fan of J. Cole. I hope one day I can work with J. Cole. J. Cole has inspired me in many ways. But when he got up there on Dreamville Fest and he said what he said, I'm not going to lie to you. I was let down. I was disappointed as a fan of J. Cole. I know J. Cole said he let Nas down, but goddamn, you let Jackie down. Not only did you let Jackie down, but you let millions of your fans around the world down when you got up there and started copping a plea to a nigga who doesn't respect you. That's right, I said it. I'm not one of these fucking airhead motherfuckers who believe that Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole are friends in real life. Fuck that shit. I don't believe they are friends, but my definition of friends is different from a lot of people's definition of friendship, right? My definition of a friend is somebody that you can depend on on your worst day. Somebody who um, you can trust with your life. Somebody who you don't never have to question whether or not they are a real one. Or they're not. Now in this industry, motherfuckers love to throw away, throw around that friend word. They love to throw around that brother word. Oh, he's my brother. Oh, we tight. We like this, man. All of that is bullshit. I don't believe that J. Cole and Kendrick are true friends. I believe J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar are industry friends. Industry friends and true friendship are two different things. Industry friends are two people who are in the same line of work, similar to co-workers, who they both have a common interest in the business and they work together in order to achieve common goal. That is different from friendship. I don't believe Kendrick Lamar respects J. Cole. 
I don't believe Kendrick Lamar respects Drake. I don't believe Kendrick Lamar respects anybody that's not named Kendrick Lamar. Let me say that again. I don't think he respects anyone who is not Kendrick Lamar. Why do I say that? Because J. Cole wants to fix his mouth and apologize to Kendrick Lamar for going at his head, defending himself, basically. Oh, I hope my nigga forgive me. I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take it on the chin. Give me your best shot. Nigga, what? Kendrick Lamar doesn't respect J. Cole. And I know Kendrick Lamar doesn't respect J. Cole. Because when Kendrick Lamar got on that track with Future and Metro Boomin, he stepped right over J. Cole to get the Drake. Now, those hip-hop fans out there, y'all know that Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole are closer to each other in terms of skillful rap. These two are juggernauts in the industry. They are one of the best lyrical, miracle, spiritual individuals on this planet. So why did Kendrick Lamar step right over J. Cole to get to Drake? Because he doesn't respect J. Cole. J. Cole is too nice. He's too nice. And Kendrick wants to be number one. The same way Drake wants to be number one. Now, the difference between Kendrick Lamar and Drake is these two guys... They not afraid of that smoke. These two guys, whenever it's time to compete and be in battle, they're front, ready, and center, and ready to go to war with whoever steps to them. The reason I felt let down and disappointed by J. Cole's decision to go up there and wave the right flag to Kendrick Lamar is because me, as like millions of his fans around the world, we all believe that J. Cole was that guy. We all believe that J. Cole was the number one for many years of J. Cole's career. He has been known as the underrated one of the big three. And over the last three years, J. Cole has been on a level that no one else in the industry is on. J. Cole has been rapping like his life depends on it. And on all of these rap records, J. Cole is going on there talking about how he's the best, how don't nobody want it with him. And the moment when the world is watching and the world is waiting for J. Cole to step up and prove why it is that he is who we all believe him to be. You start copping, please. Really? You start copping, please. After you go at a nigga's head. When he said, fuck the big three. J. Cole has been the only person talking about the big three. Drake ain't said shit about the big three. Kendrick ain't said shit about the big three. J. Cole has been the only one talking about the big three. Kendrick got on record and said, fuck the big three. It's just big me. And I didn't even think for one second that J. Cole would ever respond to that shit. Because first of all, he wasn't really going at Cole. It's a couple lines in there to where you can say maybe, but the main line is fuck the big three because that was a J. Cole line on first person shooter. He said, fuck you. And not only that, but he stepped right over your body and he walked right over to that nigga in Toronto. And he called him to fight. Because he doesn't see J. Cole in that light. He doesn't see J. Cole as the numero uno. Does that sound like a nigga who got respect for you? Especially when we talking about bars. J. Cole is closer to Kendrick in terms of bars. It makes more sense for J. Cole and Kendrick to go head to head than Drake and Kendrick to go head and head. But he stepped right over J. Cole. 
to get the drink. So what does that say Kendrick thinks about J. Cole? Not only does this make J. Cole look weak, not only does this make him look like a fraud, but it also makes Kendrick Lamar look like Thanos in this shit. This nigga got the Infinity Stone and don't nobody want to come near this nigga. For a decade plus, this nigga Kendrick has been going at y'all head tops. And motherfuckers keep acting like they don't hear nothing. He been calling y'all nigga out for 12 years. And everybody want to act like they don't hear nothing. What the fuck happened to hip hop? Too many soft ass niggas in this shit, man. And what I can't seem to wrap my head around is what the fuck are niggas scared for? What the fuck are y'all scared for? Of little old Kendrick? Kung Fu Kenny, that's what y'all scared for? This nigga got y'all scared to come outside. He got niggas copping, please, before the battle even gets started. The reason this shit is such a big deal in hip-hop today is because 12 years ago, when, when did Control come out? Did it come out in... 12 or 14, I, it, it was probably 14 or 13. So 11 years ago, Kendrick Lamar got on the track. He called out all you niggas. He said, starting with you, J. Cole. That goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mill, Aesop Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J. Electron, Tyler MacMiller. I've got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. And motherfuckers been scared of him ever since. Where the fuck is y'all balls at? I'm pissed the fuck off if y'all haven't fucking realized by now. I'm pissed off. Because I got on here and I stuck my neck out for J. Cole. And I've been in comment sections all over the internet defending J. Cole. And defending Drake, who still ain't said shit yet. And you apologize, nigga? You apologize, nigga? For what? What the fuck are you apologizing for, J. Cole? You are that nigga. You cold. Cold world. That's you. What the fuck are you apologizing for? I've got tremendous respect for J. Cole. J. Cole is one of my favorite artists of this generation. One of the most talented Talented people to walk the face of this planet. We all know that. J. Cole is a really good guy. I don't know him personally, but from what I can see of J. Cole, he seems to be a humble, very intelligent brother. I've got nothing but love and respect for J. Cole. I hope to one day be able to work with J. Cole. But this is a big moment in hip hop. Because for years and years and years, millions of people have been saying J. Cole is one of them. He's one of those ones. When we talk about the Jay-Z's and we talk about the Nas and the Eminem's and the Ice Cubes and the Drake's and the Kendrick Lamar, we thought J. 
J. Cole was going to be in there. We thought that Cole was the best nigga out of all of them, but that he was just underrated. How the fuck can we believe in you and you don't even believe in yourself? This is the same nigga who got on record and went at Wale and Kanye West, two people who he's supposed to be friends with and have a relationship with in this industry, unprovoked, went at Wale and Kanye West. And then a day later, started talking about, no, it's all good. It's all good. Me, me and Wale cool. We, we cool. We brothers. We finna go to the game. We finna go to the game. This is the same nigga who when NBA Youngboy got on record and dissed him, He hopped on the record and obviously responded back to NBA Youngboy. He went at Youngboy's head, but then on the very next record, he started talking about, oh, I still want to give me a song with YB. Can't trust everything that you saw on IG. Nigga! We not fucking stupid. We know you win that young boy. Every time J. Cole goes at somebody, he throws stones and then he hides his fucking hand. Numero uno my ass. I'm disappointed. I'm let down. I've been bamboozled. And it's unacceptable. Now with my eyes. I didn't lose any respect for J. Cole. Because the overwhelming majority of the respect that I have for J. Cole is who I believe him to be as a human being. Who I believe J. Cole to be as a human being is a lot greater than what I believe him to be as an MC. And as a spiritual person, I can understand when a person says, hey, something doesn't sit right in my spirit. But what I can understand is why the fuck you did that shit in the first place? Should have just shut up. They should have ran up on stuff on stage and tackled J. Cole when he said that shit. Somebody in the balcony, I don't even know if they was in the arena or what. But if they was in the arena, somebody from the balcony should have swan town bombed J. Cole ass when he said that shit. Anybody who loved J. Cole should not have let that nigga go up there and do that shit. Because now, in a lot of people's eyes, his legacy will never be the same. I'm not saying in my eyes, because like I said, I respect him a lot more for who he is as a human being than who he is as a person. But I've been seeing a lot of people on the internet say J. Cole is no longer a member of the Big Three. You got Drake and you got Kendrick and then you got everybody else. They said J. Cole belongs in Big Sean's and Wale's tier. And quite frankly, I kind of agree with them. Because you cannot get on record talking about you the best, 
But when it's time to go toe to toe with the best, you want to fucking tuck your tail between your legs and run the other way. The best don't do that shit. And for as long as J. Cole has been in the game, millions of his fans perceived him to be the best. You can't say you the best after this shit. You just can't. I'm sorry. You can't say that you're the best after this. Because you had your chance to prove it. I like the seven minute drill. I wasn't a fan of the beat. But I think it was a suitable response to Kendrick. Was it enough to get Kendrick out of the paint? Hell no. But it was suitable for the response to Kendrick. And three days later, You get up there and show everybody why you aren't who you say you are. And that hurt me as a fan of J. Cole. Now, Aubrey still has yet to respond to Kendrick Lamar. And I've got faith that Drake is not going to disappoint me. Because Drake is battle tested. The reason why I'm going with Drake in this battle is because Kendrick Lamar has not been battle tested. And as an artist who have been in rap beef with other local artists and who has made this songs even I know that there's a difference between your ability to rap and then your ability to battle. Because when you're in that battle, there's immense pressure. And you can't be great until you can look pressure in his eyes and you can tell pressure to get beneath you because you are greater than the person standing across from you. When the pressure is at its highest, that's when you're supposed to be at your best. And Kendrick Lamar has never been in a battle. So I can't say sit here and say because Kendrick Lamar is a great rapper that he'll be great in battle because we've never seen it before. Because you pussy ass rap niggas is too scared to look that man in his eyes. I've been very critical of Kendrick Lamar over the years. Not because I'm not a fan of him, because I am a fan of his. I just wrapped his control verse, bar for bar. I'm a big Kendrick fan. But the reason why I've been critical of Kendrick is because people say he's the best. And I don't think he's the best. He's one of the best. I don't think he is the best. That's all. Nothing personal, just sport. I don't think he's the best. But when he did that control verse last decade, and all of you pussy ass rap niggas were too scared to hop on wax with the man, you did nothing 
but make the legend of Kendrick Lamar stronger. And that bullshit ass stunt that J. Cole pulled the other night only made Kendrick stronger. Now, God damn it. This might sound like sour grapes. This might sound like hate. But quite frankly, I don't give a fuck because I'm just being honest. If I was in J. Cole's position, I would eat Kendrick for lunch. That's right, I said it, God damn it. I would eat Kendrick for lunch if I was in J. Cole's position. I'm not finna argue with you internet niggas about my talent and my ability to put together words. Because I was stamped by Royce the 5'9". One of the greatest lyricists to ever pick up a microphone. Royce the 5'9 stamped me. I was stamped by Grammy nominated producer Kato on the track. I got stamps on my record. Who's stamping y'all niggas? I would eat Kendrick ass for lunch if I was in that position. But that's because this is sport. This is what the fuck hip hop is supposed to be about. It's battle. It's sports. This is the one fucking battle that is guaranteed that you're not going to fucking die, bro. Kendrick Lamar isn't running down on anybody. Drake isn't running down on anybody. Cole isn't running down on anybody. It's just rap. It's just hip hop. What the fuck is niggas scared for? Now I'm gonna give Kendrick his flowers. Kendrick Lamar might be the greatest rapper of all time. If this is how Kendrick has niggas shaking in their fucking boots, Kendrick Lamar is the greatest rapper of all time. And not even on y'all worst day can y'all lace that man's boots. If this is the type of shit you rap niggas is on. Man ain't never been in a battle with nobody and y'all scared to say his name. He ain't candy, man. He's just a man. But apparently, he's the only fucking man in this industry. So for that, Kendrick Lamar has my complete respect. Until somebody can show me otherwise. God damn it, man. I want to thank you all for tuning in to a short podcast with Jackie Jordan. Obviously, I had to come on here and get some shit off of my chest because of these pussy ass niggas in the rap industry. But thank you for tuning in with me and listening to me rant for 30 minutes straight. Next week, I don't know what we're going to talk, talk about, but it's going to be... Great, great content. I'll be here, same place, same time, on a short podcast with Jackie Jordan. See you all later. Peace out.